Hello folks, this is a three-year ownership update on this particular watch, which is SBGA 413, the best-selling Grand Seiko in the U.S. And I'll talk about different parts of the watch, um, starting with the dial, which I love, uh, a little bit about the case, and then finally ending with goddamn bracelet that I hate. Uh, so, here we go. The dial is the best-looking dial that I've ever seen on a watch. Um, I stated that in the original review that I did, <clears throat> and three years later, I still stand by that statement. It has different types of textures. I think it's supposed to be a um, pattern of a flower that falls during the spring in Japan. Um, I just see clouds. So uh, I, I guess I could kind of see what they mean by flower patterns, but more than anything, it just reminds me of a like a cloud. Uh, but it, what it does is depending on the shade and how you posi position the watch, it provides a variety of textures on the dial, along with different shades of pink and majority of the time is silver. Uh, but the combination of all those factors, I believe this is the best looking dial on a watch in the market today. I also stand by the statement that I made in the original review that it's not orgasmic. Like the kids say nowadays, um, what, what they say what glazing. There was way too much glazing that was happening over this particular dial, especially with the fact that majority of the watch reviewers are, they have British accents for whatever reason. And when you combine the two, the glazing plus the British accent, it just went way overboard. So all I was trying to say was, yes, it is the best looking dial on a watch, but let's bring down the expectations a little bit. Because when you look at it in person, it's not going to change your life. It's just a beautiful watch. That's it. So the power reserve. So if my iPhone 3 is not able to capture this uh, the, the watch in detail. I'll try to slide in a micro shot or something like that. But ultimately, there's a power reserve right there along the 8 o'clock where uh, for majority of the people, it seems like it gets them a little bit perturbed because it, they, they feel as though it throws off the balance of the watch. For me, um, after three years of ownership, I, I barely even notice it. I think it actually fits along with the design and um, I saw a mock-up of this particular watch without that power reserve or the power gauge. Um, somebody did a Photoshop of it, and I looked at it, and it looked empty to me. It looked like something was missing on the watch because I'm so used to this particular design. So I actually think that power reserve fits along really well in this particular model. Now, I saw another model where the power reserve had a different color. I think it was black. Uh, the dial was black and had like a gold power reserve. or I can't remember the... Uh, exact model number. If I find it, I'll post a picture of it somewhere. That was not great because now it was really standing out. It was really throwing off the actual design of the dial. But this one, because everything is pretty much either silver or slightly pink and the power reserve is pretty much the same color and there's like a texture all the way throughout the dial, it just gets hidden within the dial itself. So the power reserve is really all that not noticeable. And on top of that, it's a functionality that I use all the time. However, one thing that I do not like about the power reserve that is actually backwards. So if you actually look at the watch itself, the it's actually the opposite of what you would see on a fuel gauge, which is counterintuitive. So on the power reserve, if it's empty, it'll point vertical. And then if it's full, it'll be all the way horizontal this way. So it actually goes backwards versus what you see on a fuel gauge. So it's counterintuitive. I don't know exactly the reasons as to why I did it that way. I'm sure I could Google it up and find out, or maybe it's just like a Japanese thing and they're trying to be quirky. I'm not quite sure, but that drives me insane. So there are times, even though I have owned this watch for three years, if there are periods of time where I don't wear for a decent amount of time and I pick it up, that always gets me confused. I'm like, wait a second, this thing is empty. And I realized, actually, no, it's fully charged because it's pointing this way at the bottom, which usually means that it's empty. So that is a negative when it comes to the power reserve. But the power reserve itself is a functionality that I use all the time. And it's not that noticeable uh, on the actual dial itself because of the texture and the color pattern that exists in the dial. There is also another thing that I would like to point out is the polishing is amazing on a Grand Seiko. But when you take it out in the sun and it's so heavily polished and the dial actually kind of blings a little bit along with all the hour markers and the hands, uh, the visibility is going to be shit. I'm just giving you a heads up. So even though the dial is great, 
if visibility is a main factor to you, it's going to be like, uh, if, if you're out in the sun, it's going to be like fine Waldo. Like you, you won't be able to tell the time. It's going to be like wearing a Movado or something like that. So the visibility is a big factor for you. Within the three years that I had, <laughs> you know, it actually hasn't gotten worse. I got three years older. So my eyes have gotten three years older. Therefore, the visibility actually hasn't gotten way worse than when I originally bought this. The logo of Grand Seiko logo, I'm okay with it. It's fine. Font of Grand Seiko that's written in black below the logo. I know we need to have like a universal language across the brand and all the models, but for this particular watch, I feel like that font is a little bit too aggressive. Um, I've seen it on different models where the dial was black and it was a little bit more aggressive or I would say maybe even more masculine. Uh, it kind of fit perfectly within those, but this one, because the watch itself is so elegant, it's pink and it has all these textures, supposed to be like flowers and stuff. That particular font to me kind of stands out a little bit as being a little bit too aggressive, but as I'm just kind of nitpicking here, but I just wanted to call that out. After three years of ownership, if there's certain things that I do not like about the dial, um, that's a little bit um, part of it, along with the fact that it's not really all that visible as far as trying to tell the time within the sunlight and then the power gauge is backwards. Uh, it's backwards, I don't know what else to say. So the case itself, it has a exhibition case back to show off the spring drive movement. Um, therefore it protrudes out just like any other exhibition case back. And then um, the actual lugs are slightly curved and then it has a regular uh, male end links, but it's, it actually is not too bad at all. Some of the reviewers have kind of um, talked about in my original review that it scratches easily, but I have not really seen that. I don't think I have seen any scratches on this, but however, I do baby this watch, but titanium is supposed to be more durable uh, as far as being scratch resistant than uh, regular steel. And so far, I really do not see any scratches on this particular case, so I can't really speak to that matter. Um, the only thing that I would improve is I don't really look at the back of the movement um, at all. I really don't really care for the exhibition case back. If I have to trade that in for more of a wearability factor and having a, a flat um, solid case back where it, it curves around my wrist a little bit better rather than having that little bit of a floating mechanism uh, between the lugs and then the protruding case back, that little Bermuda triangle space. If I could avoid that having by having a, a, a solid case back and even if that means that doesn't show off the movement, I would just make that trade off. But I never look at the back and go like, wow, look at that back. <laughs> so as far as a bracelet is concerned, um, I hate this bracelet. Uh, I cannot stand it. So there's a couple things that I don't like about the bracelet. One, uh, the pros of the bracelet, I guess, along with the case is that the whole case is made out, or whole watch is made out of titanium, I believe, as far as the case, as well as the bracelet. So when I measured it, I'll put a video in here somewhere. Um, even with a 40 millimeter um, dial, with the spring drive, size for a 6.5 inch wrist, it was, was weighing in at 91 grams. Versus a different watch that is also, a different Grand Seiko that is also 40 millimeter with a 9F quartz, it measured in, I believe, like 130 or 131. I'll put a video of it somewhere around here that compares the two. So it's a very, very light watch. And a lot of that has to do with the actual bracelet and the fact that it's made out of titanium. However, what that also means is that when I wear this particular watch, like this, when I have it around my 6.5 inch wrist, the 40 diameter, um, again, it looks good as far as how it fits on my wrist, but um, because it's so light and all the weight is distributed on the head of the watch, when I move my arm, I just worked out, so I think, this is a little bit tight on me. Uh, it fits perfectly on me right now, but majority of the time it's a little bit loose. So what tends to happen is because there is no micro adjustment on the clasp, I'm stuck in between a, a no man's land between it's a little bit too loose or it's a little bit too tight. And out of those two choices, I tend to go for a little bit too loose. And what that tends to happen on this particular watch, because all the weight is distributed on the head of the watch, and then everything else is just very, very light because of the titanium, when I move my wrist or arm, uh, the head of the watch just kind of flops around a little bit. And it's very, very, it doesn't feel very secure. Uh, and it's not comfortable either. You know, I don't care how light it is. If you have this thing constantly moving around, 
you're gonna feel like it's just gonna be bothersome on your wrist. And it's, that's exactly how I feel when I wear this watch with the bracelet. And on top of that, as far as the aesthetics of the bracelet, you know, it has a um, coloring of uh, usual titanium, a uh, little bit of a dark gray. And then within the middle links, there is a little bit of a polishing that happens within the middle links of the actual watch. Uh, I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up. To me, aesthetically, this, I don't know why, this bracelet reminds me of a pig intestine. And I don't even know what a pig intestine looks like, but I imagine that it looks like this. And it grosses me out. No idea. I can't rationalize it in any way. I'm just telling you how I feel. I've kind of felt like that since I bought it initially when I bought it, and I still feel like that now. Um, and on top of it, it's a 21 millimeter width on the top. Therefore, you're probably gonna have to buy some new straps. I don't know why the hell people are going. Grand said, go just go with a 20, man. It's 21 and 19, like just go 20, maybe 22 if you wanna have a wider look, but why 21 is just, you're being extra, just let it go. So it's 21 here and it tapers down to 18 at the bottom. And frankly, like the tapering, even though it's it's not enough, it, it kind of looks like there is no taper on this bracelet for me. Um, I like a lot of tapering on my bracelet or even on my strap. And um, this one from 21 to 18, is not as drastic as something that is um, 20 to a 16. I don't know if I have a, another one, but yeah. So usually on a watch, I see the tapering about four millimeters from a 20 to a 16. This one is only three, but it's from 21 to 18. So the, the actual tapering looks less. Not only is it actually less, but proportionally it looks like there is no tapering and I don't like that. Uh, let me see. I talked about the lack of micro adjustments. But on top of that, I would say visually, there's a there's an issue as well. <laughs> I mean, the pig intestine. Okay, I already talked about the pig intestine. But visually also, because it's a... Everything on the watch is kind of like silver majority of the time. So it doesn't... It draws, for me, the focus away from the actual dial. I want the focus to be on the dial. And then having this particular bracelet with this, you know predator forehead looking design just kind of takes your eye away from this beautiful beautiful dial and so majority of the time when i wear this watch i wear it on a strap and i'll show it to you there well i'll show it to you here so majority of the time i wear it on a this particular strap so this strap i got it from etsy for about 50 bucks it's a leather strap is dark navy um and the reason that i wear it on this particular strap is one is comfortable Secondly, I could have it secured around my wrist. Um, it feels a lot more secure around my wrist than the bracelet that it comes with. There's a heavy tapering that happens on this particular strap that I got from Etsy. it. It got it tapered from 21 to I believe about 15 at the bottom, which is a heavy, heavy taper and I like that look. And on top of it, the dark navy actually puts a lot more emphasis on the actual dial of the watch and it contrasts and it complements the actual dial of the watch because most of the times it's silver, dark navy goes really well with silver or white. When it's slightly pink, it also goes really well with the slight pink hue if you have a dark navy strap. So um, I love this particular strap. It was, I believe, 55 bucks or something like that at Etsy. Uh, and I wear it exclusively on this particular strap when it comes to wearing this watch. So what I would say is that if you like the look of that particular bracelet it comes with that titanium and you don't you're not stuck in the no man's land when it comes to the sizing because it doesn't have a micro adjustment stick with that uh, bracelet if you're interested in purchasing this watch but if you are feel like you're going to be stuck in that no man's land or you just don't like the look of that bracelet get the watch because the dial you can't beat it and on top of that spring drive i love the spring drive movement it's accurate as hell um, I would just try to invest a little bit on a leather strap or any strap, maybe a suede that complements the dial and pushes your attention toward the dial rather than taking away from it. So um, that's it for me. I think, um, again, no outro. See ya.